Here we practice descriptive statistics. I have one fixed column here. These data are fixed. The rest of the data are variable. They are changing. I have 70 pieces of data. You can click on 5 and 71. Right click, unhide, and then right click again and hide. So I have hidden a portion of my data to make my job a little easier. Now I go to data, data analysis, descriptive statistics. Usually we have a lot of data and we want to summarize them. We want to have a better feeling about them. What is the mean? What is the median? What is standard deviation? What is the range? What is the standard deviation divided by mean? What is range divided by median and so on and so forth. So I tell Excel my data are here from B3 to B72. And I want summary statistics. I can have some other options, but I only select that summary statistics. Do you want a summary statistics in a column or in a row? I want it in a column. Do you want it on another worksheet or on this worksheet? I want it on this worksheet. Click here and click here. Enter the result on A75. Okay, and the result is here. The main problem with this tool, with computing descriptive statistics this way, is if I go here and change 1800 to 18 million, no change will happen in my data. Here, nothing happened, just the width of the cell got larger to, to handle that 18 million. Otherwise, in these numbers, there are no change. If I undo it, these numbers are exactly the same. So I have mean, standard error, median, mode, and so on and so forth. Now, I'm going to show how this data can be computed also in a, a dynamic form, such that if I change one piece of data, that change is immediately reflected in the rest of my descriptive statistics. I go here and type average, average, from here to here. And because I'm not going to select that range again and again and again, I'll go and lock it. I click on F4 and it is locked and then I copy it all the way down. Double click on this and just copy it down. Average, 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 average. All of them are average at that range. However, here I come down. This one I forget it for the time being. Median. I go over there and replace average with median. I go here and I change average with mode. Median is a point where 50% of observations are on one side and 50% are on the other side. Usually, we can compare mean and median. If mean is greater than median, that means we have some large numbers which have pushed mean to go to the right of median. The curve is skewed to the right. And if mean is less than median, we have some very small numbers which have pushed mean to be on the left hand side of median. Then here I type standard deviation, standard deviation of sample, not population. Variance is simply standard deviation squared. Cortices tells us how many standard deviations should we go to the left and right total altogether to cover 99.73% of observations. In normal distribution, we need to go three to the right, three to the left. But if a distribution has very long tails, we need to go more than three standard deviation to the right and more than three standard deviation to the left to cover 99.73% of observations. So here I can erase average and I can type vertices 
let's select the rest. Usually they compare courtesies of any distribution with normal distribution. Normal distribution, you need to go three standard deviation to the left and three standard deviation to the right to cover 99.73% of data. If our courtesies is positive, that means it has wider tails compared to normal distribution. If it is negative, it has a smaller tails than normal distribution. And here I can just go and erase average and type skewedness and enter. And as we expect, skewness should come out positive. And it comes. Out. It was purely normal. It should have come out zero. However, these two we really don't need to be worried about because. The father of quality control says these numbers are not very important. So if you didn't grasp them, don't worry. They don't play a very important role in our analysis. And also know that we can get some information regarding skewness by comparing median and mean. Then I have range. I go here and type max. And I go here and I type mean. And the range is simply the difference between max and mean. And then sum, I go here and I type sum. There is summation of those numbers, which I really don't think I need it. Count, go to auto, count. How many observations do I have? This standard error is standard deviation of the average. So if I have a sample here, if I have one here, if I have one here, each of them has an average. If they come from the same population, then average of them also has a distribution with a specific average and a specific standard deviation. Standard deviation of the averages is equal to Standard deviation of the sample divided by SQRT square root of the sample size. And that's it. I really don't need these two, so I'm going to delete them. I don't need some, I'm going to delete. So I'm going to delete this column two. I'm going to take these numbers here. And I would like also to change the order a little bit. I bring this one down. Take mean and median over there. Take standard deviation over here. I will take minimum and maximum over there. I will take range over there. I really don't need sample variance because sample standard deviation to the power of two is sample variance so i do not need it i also like to compute here under the standard deviation i like to compute coefficient of variations we also show it by cv Suppose we have two samples. Standard deviation of one is 200. Standard deviation of the other one is 2,000. Which one has a larger variation? One is 200, one is 2,000. We don't know. It depends on the average. If the one which has standard deviation of 2,000, if it has an average of 1 million, and the other one has an average of 500, then 200 compared to 500 is much larger than the other. So coefficient of variations is simply standard deviation divided by average. I like also define range by median, which is equal to range divided by median. Here, mode is a number which is repeated more than any other. It is the peak of the distribution curve. And the standard error, I like to bring it over. Now I have enough data. I need a little bit 
reduce the number of decimal points. Now I have this. Now let's copy this to the right. When I copy it to the right, because the range was referring to the column B, then when I copy to column C, it is still referring to column B. I locked it because I was going to copy this down and go away there and replace this average to median. However, when I copy this median to the right, still it show me the median of column B. Now, this is a good time to understand partial absolute referencing. We can have relative referencing when we lock neither row nor column. We can have absolute referencing like this when we have locked both row and column. We have locked B and we have locked 3. But we also have partial absolute referencing when we lock either row or column. Let me show it to you here. I'll go here I lock 3, but unlock B, unlock B. Now, if I copy this down, if I go and change this median, it still refers to column B, rows 3 to row 72. I copy this down, I go and change this one to mode, Standard deviation. Equal to standard deviation divided by mean. Minimum. Maximum. range equal to maximum minus minimum range divided by median this one divided by median count and here I have equal to Standard deviation divided by SQRT of count this. Now, B is not locked. So, if I copy to the right, B becomes C. If I copy back to here, this one becomes L. Therefore, all I need to do is to copy all these numbers. And now I have everything. I don't need to go 10 times or 100 times to data analytics, descriptive statistics. All data is computed. Just let me to give you an a better understanding of what this standard error is, that is equal to standard deviation of these averages. That is standard deviation of the averages, which we have here estimated by 39.1, here by 35, 33, 31, 36, 34, 32, 36. This is how we have estimated. If the sample size goes up, these numbers get closer to each other. So, for example, it is 
25.6 and these numbers are now closer so as sample size goes up our estimate of the standard deviation of average gets better and in general when sample size goes up our estimate of average gets better or average of median gets better or average of everything gets better that's it. Thank you very much for your attention.